You'll have to excuse my brashness, uh, my, my occasional use of cuss words. Um, I'm from Australia and it's considered normal to, to swear regularly. So <laughs> I, I, I do have to uh, hold back a little bit and I do. And I have done, I've never sworn on radio, I have sworn on national television. Um, I said the, uh, the F word and everyone laughed. So that's just how it is. And it's a cultural thing. I do apologize for my accent, but to me, everybody here has accents and I speak normally. <laughs> so um, I'll give you a little bit of an overview of who I am and what I've done. My name's Neil Johnson. I'm a director. I've been a director for 23 years. I was the youngest television director in Australia. I, I guess you could say I started young. I did my first music video at 16, and that's all I've ever done. So I know everything about cameras and directing and, and nothing about anything else. So that's pretty much all I can talk about. That's all the only things I know about in life. I made my first feature film at the age of 30 because I got frustrated. I hadn't made a movie. I'd made a lot of short films. Feature film got released. It was called Demons in My Head, R released worldwide. It was, I guess you could say, it was well received in certain territories, in the UK and everywhere else. I'll talk to, uh, later about how the deal for that one went down and how I you know, lost a lot of money. Second film was called To Become One. And I got frustrated from my first film because the first one was just people in a room talking, basically, or in a house with some creatures and demons. Second film was all on location. It was amazing. It was wonderful. It cost me $2,154 $2, because that's all the money I had left. And that's an honest honest amount and that's a good there's some good tricks on you know making movies at, at that budget level that film uh, got me a lot of press there were some funny situations with that we we ended up getting into uh, Fangoria magazine which you'll probably see in the notes as uh, the Fangoria magazine articles and they asked me to do uh, to write a story on, on how I could make a movie for two thousand one hundred dollars and this is the days before the Blair Witch Project came out well actually it was it was on the eve of the Blair Witch Project. And everybody looked at my film and said, how could you make this movie for, for $2,000? It's not possible. It looks like it cost a million dollars because this was 19, oh, the year 2000. Had explosions and everything else. So it was very confusing to people. And then the Blair Witch came out. And that cost $35,000. It looked like a pile of crap. I mean, it was a good film, but it just didn't look great visually. My film looked amazing and nobody believed me. They thought I was cashing in on the Blair Witch thing, but it was an honest uh, as in this thing, it really did cost that. And that's why I provide some little examples there to really talk you through how I did it and tells you about the problems and everything else. I continued making music videos. I started by getting a good name as a music video director in Europe, doing some of the biggest bands and some of the biggest coverages in Europe. I think one day we blew $750,000 on a massive live coverage, the biggest high definition coverage ever done in Europe. And it was 32 HD cameras. Um, and I was the guy behind all that, and by, by that I mean I was just the director, and I, we put out the DVD of it later, and it's rated as the greatest live coverage ever done in 2005. So, you know, you can make of that what you wish, it's nice press, I don't necessarily believe that, but it's okay. Third film was called Battle Space, and we had a budget for that, and then you'll probably see a lot of excerpts from the making of Battle Space. I was lucky to have a camera crew documenting the making of the film the entire time, and there was lots of problems and lots of things going, going wrong, so you'll see a lot of that footage later on. Film got released, made a profit, made a good profit. It was a science fiction film, my first proper science fiction film. It got hammered by the critics, but that's okay, it made a profit, and that makes me happy. I was able to take that profit, rework my, first, my next two films. Uh, how do you explain this? I took my first film, Demons in My Head. I blew it up to high definition. By the way, Demons in My Head was the world's first digital film. So, you know, you can make of that what you wish, but I was told I was a fool, but now I guess it's, it's a cool thing. We blew Demons in My Head up to high definition, recut it, added some special effects, renamed the film, it was recalled uh, Nephilim. And so I was able to make a new film from the remnants of the old film. The reason I did that was because I got ripped off by the distributors and they had off-sold the rights without my permission to other territories, so I felt it was my right to take back my own film. And that's why I really did that, and so I could make some money back on that movie. 
I did that with my second film as well, To Become One. I blew it up to high definition again. We shot extra footage in New York. We added some scenes at the start of the film of a girl being murdered with a knife and you see blood and breasts and everything else. I'm not into showing nudity on film, but I did it because I was told that that would uh, help the international sales. And then I guess it did. Um, never will do, I, I'm, I have no interest in doing nudity on camera since, you know, I think that's, you know, it's my own personal thing. I don't need to do that. Uh, it's a bipolar Armageddon, that was that film. You know, it, it had a couple of really shocking scenes in it that got a lot of interesting press, and I won't talk about those scenes because I think they're probably uh, too extreme even for, you know, anything. So my next film after that was called Humanity's End. And that's when I took all the money from Battle Space and put that into a, um, a science fiction film. It was a big film. You'll see excerpts from that film as well. Humanity's End did quite well in the marketplace. However, we, we premiered the film at the time when the market went straight down. It was about 2008, I think, when really, everything started to die. So it's a combination of downloads, companies going broke, you know, all the, the big movies of the past were starting to disappear, and that's, we were caught in the middle of that. And of course, everybody was still making movies. Hence, 2008 came about, movie prices were down, and you know, we still made, you know, made good sales in that film. We're firstly gonna talk about script, choosing a subject matter and what to avoid. And this is talking about genre versus horror films versus dramas and comedies. Now, I'm not biased, but in my opinion, and this is only my opinion, I've made a few films and I, I walk the, the, the halls of the markets and I see what's popular and everything else and see thousands of filmmakers making movies and they never sell them. And this is a great shame. My, I was lucky, I did a horror film uh, back in 1997, the world's first digital film before the digital explosion. Apparently I caused it, but I don't believe that. <laughs> George Lucas caused it, but whatever. Um, I was lucky back then because horror films were hot and you could sell horror films. I really like science fiction, but I did a horror film. And it was a good choice. I could take it to the market, they could sell it. It had, you know, some gory looking stuff, some guy cut off you know, with his guts hanging out and all that sort of thing, which is, you know, great for horror films. I'm not a fan of watching horror films, by the way, but I love, love making them. A lot of fun. So I did a horror film, and it sold, and we hit number seven on the, in the blockbuster top ten in the UK. So, you know, it was proof to me that the right choice of film would work. It was sort of disguised as a comedy and had some, you know, this is back in the Kevin Smith era. And, you know, Chasing Amy was a cool film, and I had a lot of relationship discussions in the movie. Nobody really cared about that, but anyway. Horror was selling well. Uh, the marketplace changed, and this is why research is really important, and you guys will have to do a lot of research to sort of, you know, figure out what you want to do, but the marketplace changed, and all of a sudden, horror wasn't cool. And I'll say the reason being is that the market was flooded, and this is about 2003, 2004, 2005. Horror became unsellable. I mean, yeah, you could sell it, but maybe get $1,000 per territory, and that's about it. So it really became a problem. And my first two films, which had been off-sold to other distributors, were packaged in lots of 100. So they, 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 somebody would come to this distributor at the film market and say, we'll give you a lot of 100 films. And I think the price might have been $20,000. So you can imagine what's that work out to be, about 200 bucks a movie? Is that right? Yeah. It's not a lot of money to pay for my films, which had cost me twenty or $50,000. So that's how the market went. I believe still is. Uh, yes, you can make horror films. Yes, they can be in the, in, the, you know, in the cinema and everything else, but that's got to do with marketing and everything else. There's a lot of horror films right now, vampire films, a lot of vampire films being made and sadly not being sold. And that's what it is. Choosing a script is really, a type of script is very important. It's very, very hard at this stage to sell drama. And this is God's honest truth. I love doing drama films. I want to do a comedy. Can't do it because they don't sell. Because you've got a comedy, so apparently right now in the market, you can't sell it. However, you do a horror comedy, maybe you've got something clever. But you know, I still think that's maybe a little you know, scary one. I'm going to try and do a horror science fiction film one, uh, one day because I think this is cool. But nobody really knows you know, what the future is going to bring. But right now, you know, you can't sell drama. You can't sell comedy. Action films, yeah, if they've got explosions, you can sell them pretty well. 
And I'm talking about the low end of things. I'm not talking about the high end of things. I'm just talking about getting your money back and, you know, ma and making everybody happy and getting a sale, which is the reality of things. I choose science fiction only because, well, not only, I love it. <laughs> I'm a science fiction freak, but I choose it because it sells. And it's very easy to sell science fiction films compared to everything else because not everybody can do it. I guess that's why this course is important. And science fiction can mean fantasy, can mean a tiny little aspect of something strange happening in the universe and, you know, normalcy. It doesn't necessarily mean spaceships. I like spaceships and that's why I have spaceships in my films. So it's, it's just really, really important to know exactly what your market is. And why I chose Alien Armageddon was because I, and we'll talk about this later, I did some research and I looked at what movie was coming in the middle of 2011. And I saw that Cowboys and Aliens, uh, Super 8, Battle Los Angeles, uh, lots of alien invasion movies that promised to be big and big money spinners. And therefore, I would ride on the backs of their success. And that's all I did. And that's why I chose Alien Armageddon. Yes, I wanted to do an alien invasion movie since the year 1999. That's a God's honest truth. But I waited until I knew when the market was going to hit right for that. And that's why I did it. And that's, you know, simple things, just choosing a simple subject matter. Um, I was going to say, it, it's the clever way is to sort of try to, you know, cross over into different genres and everything else. And I think that's, you know, that's why movies like, uh, what was, what was it, Shaun of the Dead? Yeah. Did anyone, everyone see Shaun of the Dead? Right. Yeah. Great film, a zombie, zombie comedy. And then everyone's copied that and done a couple more. By the way, don't do a zombie film right now, they're not selling. Yeah. Everyone's doing zombie film. I mean, if you can do it cleverly and do it really well, you might get lucky. But I'm just saying, there's a lot of zombie movies out there. If you take it to the market, uh, there's a lot of zombie movies not being sold right now. And uh, just be warned, I would like to do a zombie mov movie myself in outer space. I've been considering this, but I don't know if that's really the right thing to do. So that's, I guess that's, you all understand, you know, what I'm saying here about, you know, choosing your genre specifically. I mean, if you're really into certain types of dramas, a courtroom drama, do it, but give it some sort of element. A, a clever idea of a courtroom drama film was iRobot. Mm -hmm. um, was it iRobot? No. Yeah. yeah, the original one on, what was that show? Uh, Out of Limits. Yeah. Out of Limits. Yeah. It was about a robot being taken to court <laughs> and having to justify his, his reason for killing somebody. I think that was right. Mm -hmm. It was a very clever idea, so just be clever about things. Uh, go to film festivals, watch the shitty movies. <laughs> And you will learn more from crap than from good films. Believe me, I, I, I always watch bad movies. And I learn so much about my own work. It makes me realize where I fail as well. And so, you know, not, not in a bad way. Just learn from people's mistakes. It's a good thing.